I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in Atlanta for REIT World 2014, NARI's annual convention for all things REIT. Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is Bruce Shanzer, President and CEO of Cedar Realty Trust. Bruce, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having me. Now, we've talked in the past about the portfolio repositioning that, that you led at Cedar. Is, this, is the portfolio now where you want it, and what are the plans to expand now that you've refined your assets? Thanks, Matt. So, of course, we have spoken before about what we've been doing at Cedar. So just taking you back, I guess when we first started talking about it, which is, I guess, a little bit over three years ago. So Cedar, when I joined it, had about 140 assets. It was a hodgepodge of different types of, real, of retail real estate assets. And one of the things we set out to do was to bring the company a more focused, uh, well-honed portfolio that had a str both a strategic focus and a geographic focus. And so we set out to sell uh, roughly half of our portfolio by number of assets, and we reduced the portfolio from 140 assets to 70 assets. And we did that over roughly a two-year period. Uh, and we concluded that in November of 2013, so just about a year ago, we concluded the sale of that, you know, call it half our portfolio by number, in order to just have a uh, portfolio of grocery-anchored shopping centers between Washington, D.C. and Boston. Since then, we've actually continued to work the portfolio. So I guess to answer your question, you know, we're not yet satisfied with where the portfolio is, although we're satisfied with our continued focus on executing our strategic plan. And so now what we're doing is we're taking that 70 center portfolio, we're selling the bottom half of that portfolio by asset quality, and we're taking those proceeds and investing further into high quality grocery anchor shopping centers between Washington DC and Boston. And that's what we've been doing for the last year, and realistically, we'll probably be doing that for another couple of years. Great. Now, as you look to 2015, what's your sense of where retail fundamentals are headed? Retail fundamentals are pretty solid. Uh, I guess I would highlight a few characteristics. So it's not terribly exciting, but this is really where the world is. So first, of course, we have a pretty benign and positive economic tailwind. So things are starting to get better. Employment, our unemployment is down. Employment has increased. I think that consumer uh, consumers are generally speaking optimistic, consumer spending is up, and so I think that that's certainly positive. I think another very positive trend is retailers who are looking to expand. They're not doing it at a breakneck pace, but retailers are certainly looking to expand their unit counts, and again, that's a positive thing for landlords. And then the backdrop to all of that is that especially coming off of uh, you know, the massive economic correction that we've experienced is that we're not seeing a huge spike in new supply. And so this positive economic tailwind coupled with increased demand from retailers is being met with not so much new square footage and therefore you know, a pretty positive uh, context for, for landlords to run their businesses. And lastly, the generation of aging baby boomers is expected to have a major impact on real estate pretty much across the spectrum from offices to apartments. What sort of impact might it have on the grocery anchored shopping center business? The population of aging baby boomers is a component is that, that that reality is a component of our strategy. So when we think about that population, which again is growing and living longer, uh, these are people who are going to have an increased focus on, broadly speaking, two things. One is affordability. Uh, so you know when you think about what they're going to be spending their money on, it's going to be non-discretionary goods, food, you know, basic uh, consumer staples. Obviously, to the extent they have more money, maybe they'll spend a little bit more. But that's a good baseline uh, view in terms of where they'll be first focused. And so, of course, focusing on grocery stores and on fast casual restaurants as tenants is a good place for us to focus because, again, that's going to be something that they're focused on. Another area of growth in our portfolio that's consistent with this population is you know, fitness clubs, uh, wellness, other types of uh, wellness-focused type tenants such as, uh, you know, such as doctor's offices and what have you. And so, again, and you know, we feel pretty good about the fact that our portfolio does target that population, and we think that that's something that population will be focused on. Uh, a second, you know, a second sort of thought about that population that you know dovetails with uh, a sort of optimistic view of real estate is the fact that this is a group that's going to be living on fixed incomes. Uh, there's a, a large population of pensions really worldwide that are looking to support those pension obligations by continuing to focus on solid cash flow and real estate. And so we think that our asset type broadly is an asset type that will attract the pension fund money that's going to be used to support that aging baby boomer population. And we think that that will actually provide a nice support uh, to values in real estate for a long time to come, which we feel pretty good about. Great. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Thanks, Matt. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.